Welcome to CulturCast. My name is Sister Mary Michael, and I'm a Dominican Sister of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. You may have seen us, as we are located all around the world. Following in the footsteps of St. Dominic, our mission is to be teachers and preachers. And this calling puts us in front of all kinds of interesting people, in interesting places, doing interesting things. All for a great purpose, much larger than any one of us, like being on Oprah, the Dominican Sisters of Mary invited us to their big day. Look at this. On the top of the Billboard classical music charts, or on a television game show. You better believe it! Join me every week as the Culture Cast takes you inside Heaven's Kitchen to show you how to cook for an army and become a culinary artist. Or go on the road with the sisters and become traveling pilgrims as you learn all the things that can be seen and those that are unseen. Or sit down with Mother Assumpta Long as she unlocks a few stories from some unsuspecting guests. Join us for unlikely adventures, and together, let's learn new things, see new places, and meet new faces on The Culture Cast. This week on The Culture Cast, join us for conversations with Mother Assumpta Long. We're so privileged to have you, Tom, with us. It's it's a real privilege. I want you to know it. You've been a friend over all these years, and you need no introduction, so I'm not going to attempt to do that. So we're just going to go into some questions because um, we have a, a wonderful audience who would be interested in so many. You've done more than a person in his lifetime should do. So I, we're just curious. So, Tom, tell us about your childhood. Well, uh, probably... My parents were poor. Uh, my dad died uh, at the age of 29. I was four years old. Oh. I was five, and uh, and uh, I had a younger brother, and uh, and uh, and um, my mother went back to nursing school and uh, put us in a foster home, a home where there was no religion in the home, mm-hmm. and then she moved us to uh, uh, an orphanage, Catholic orphanage, run by Felician sisters. And I was there from the age of six to uh, twelve, and then, uh, and then uh, finally got out of the orphanage, uh, moved to Traverse City, which was up here, <coughs> and um, uh, but it didn't work out living with our mother. She was uh, uh, she was uh, uh, probably a mental depressant, very big highs and lows, very intelligent but very uh, emotionally high strung. And so I ended up living on the foster farms, which I loved farm work, and that was all right, except in the 10th grade, I went to the seminary. Tom, you know, it's a mystery to me. Maybe you can help me, but um, when did you take ownership of your faith, or or did anyone help you in particular to become the Catholic that you are? Well, uh, I don't know if uh, I'm—it's still a journey. (laughs) We all are. (laughs) But uh, I think a, 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 I owe my faith to a sister in a habit, and well, it was uh, Sister Barada, uh, and I had her in the first and second grade and third grade, uh, and she was not only my mother and my father, but she was my teacher. Uh, and there was uh, about uh, 20 of us in, in that age group of over three grades, and uh, that's where I got my faith. From the time I was in the second grade, I wanted to be a priest. That is, she must have been a wonderful oh, she religious. Was wonderful. That is, and great. then later on, uh, we got when I got older, uh, we had another sister. She wasn't as nice, <laughs> but uh, you know we were older, so yeah. she, she was like a marine drill instructor. That oh. was Sister Lattice Lost. Maybe that's why she liked Marines. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she was. Uh, they were very holy uh, women, and you know we had we had uh, benediction and mass every day. You know, the, did the litany of the saints every day, long morning prayers, long evening prayers. And everywhere in that huge mansion was uh, uh, statues and pictures of uh, you know, holy uh, the saints and so on. And so we were surrounded by it. And then I had the honor uh, of uh, 
in my last couple of years there of every uh, there was a big old huge mansion and uh, everybody had responsibility for one part of it. We had to clean it every day. Then on Saturday mm -hmm. morning, we had the whole school morning scrubbing the floors, <laughs> the, you know, with the wax paper uh -huh. and everything, and uh, on the floors. And we, and I had the honor of doing the chapel. So I uh -huh. uh, felt a presence in that chapel uh, every day of the week and all morning and Saturday uh, before the Blessed Sacrament. And uh -huh. I somehow rather feel that. Uh, I thought years later that certainly helped me in my faith somehow. You know, Tom, you, know, you look at the providence of God. It seems like God allowed you to be in that place to just, you know, make you um, the Catholic that you are. It's, it's wonderful. Now, to fast forward a little bit, I mean, um, you're the king of pizza. How did Domino's come about? Or, uh, uh, well, um, uh, I was uh, 23 uh, years old. I was still a freshman in college. From the day I uh, got out of high school, I was on my own financially. I had to oh. support myself. And uh, going to school was going to be pretty tough, and I wanted to be an architect. Uh, I finally got into a school that took anybody, and uh, the, the tuition wasn't very high. It's Ferris. And um, I got good grades, and I transferred to Michigan after one quarter. Oh. But I didn't have the money for Michigan, so I wound up uh, – uh, joining the Marine Corps after I couldn't find a, a job to get any money I had. And, uh, and uh, so I spent three years in the Marine Corps, and then when I got out, uh, um, I went back to Michigan, had no uh, money, basically because I took three years of savings and gave it to an oil man that had you know, make me rich, and okay. it turned out to be a, He was an Irishman, oh. you know. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, so... Uh, uh, one day, my brother, who was a mailman, uh, had a uh, on his route. There was a pizza place called Dominic's in Ann Arbor, and Dominic had a place in Ypsilanti, which is near Ann Arbor, that was closed up. It was a total failure, just a hole in the wall. And he tried to talk my brother into buying it. My brother uh, 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 didn't want to do it on his own; it was too risky. So he asked me if I'd go in with him. So I figured, well. Uh, uh, I work half the night, he worked half the night, and I'd have time to go to school, and then I'd, I'd sell enough pizza to pay my way through school. And so uh, that's how I got in the pizza business. But as soon as we—and it was $500 down, which we borrowed, uh, we, we didn't have any money. And, um, uh, and my brother uh, got cold feet after we signed the papers, and he wanted out. He was, did not give up security. It was— uh, uh, post office job, so I was stuck having to run it myself, and uh, so I never got back to school. Uh, but uh, and I had no idea what I was doing, but I uh, I, 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 I got very <laughs> what you learned. <laughs> right. Well, I got very excited about it once uh -huh. I got into it. Knew that's where I'm going to be, and I could see the potential. I was the first one uh, to focus on delivery, to see the potential mm -hmm. in delivery, mm -hmm. and uh, there were no. Pizza place that I don't think anywhere in the country that delivered except single unit mod pies, and uh, I was the first one to uh, figure. I said, if I can figure that out on a multi unit basis, uh, I'll be all right, and that's, that's what we did. That is amazing. Tom, are you? <clears throat> did you feel like you could run a business with a, a Catholic or a Christian uh, background? I mean, were you able to do that, or do you feel like? I mean, is it possible or? or? Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people say that to me. How can you be so successful yeah. and be a good Catholic? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I said, well, you know, the best way to be successful is be a good Catholic right. because uh, you just act as a golden rule and you mm -hmm. treat people properly, your, your employees, your customers, your suppliers. Uh, and, uh, and most people, frankly, don't do that. And so uh, and I tried to do that. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I had a big debate uh, with myself before I, we opened the, the doors, whether I'd be open on Sunday or not. Talked to a lot of priests and everything, and, and of course that was a tough decision because that was our biggest day because they didn't serve meals in the dorms on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, we found a justification for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good. Tom, you know, I don't even remember. When, when, do you remember when we first met? I, I, I don't. Oh. Well, I first heard about you from George Gillette. You know that name? 
Oh, I do. Uh, I do. He told me about you, and I remember he told me what a dynamo you were. I think you were the head of the Nashville Dominicans, and and uh, and I kept uh, telling him he's pronouncing it, it wrong. This, <laughs> this, this is. It's a sumter. Now this, and said, no, it's a sumter. So he spelled it out. <laughs> okay. So, and then I, uh, I think uh, I got involved in the Institute of Religious Life oh. on the board, and uh, and I, and I think that's where I heard more about you. And um, it seems to me that you won the same award that Mother Teresa won, uh, won uh, that they gave out. So yeah. that was pretty. Good company. <laughs> and then I think we probably invited you to a first Saturday, first Friday uh, right, right. Uh, dinner. And also Legatus when you first started. Uh, yeah, yeah, is, we probably uh, asked you to be a speaker yes. at some of those. Well, Tom, I want to say right now, I mean, there there is absolutely um, no way we would ever be able to repay you for what you did for us. I mean, we would not be where we are without you, and I want you to know that. And that's an I, easy uh, thing to do, brother. Oh, All you well, do is pray. Uh, yeah. Pray for me. That's well, that, no, no, we do that. I mean, we do that, but no, right now. But, um, you know, like you have done so many things for the church. Um, you know, you just look at, uh, like, tell us about Legatus. I mean, what is that or... Or how, do you, how did you see that this is going to be a great thing for the Catholic Church? Well, uh, I was in YPO. YPO, Young Presidents Organization, is probably the most effective organization I've ever belonged to as far as helping me in the business because you're dealing with all other, all the members are CEOs like I was. So you can, uh, uh, you can share things and they understand it, whereas uh, uh, other employees wouldn't. And that was uh, uh, very helpful. Now I was speaking at the uh, their uh, uh, international convention in Venice, and that was my last year. They kick you out when you're 50. That was 1987. And while I was uh, Cardinal Schock, I knew I was going there, and he uh, asked me if I wanted to attend mass in the Pope's private chapel. Uh, and uh, and I had my plane over there, so I could it was relatively easy to do to go from Venice to uh, Rome. And I said, sure, he's my big hero. And I did, and um, uh, received communion from him. And I'll never forget uh, uh, him putting the host on my tongue, and his eyes met mine, and his eyes were right there. And I'm looking at those blue eyes, uh, and his and our eyes met, and I'll never forget that. And then later on, we go out in the other room, and, and he goes around and says hi to everybody, and gives him a rosary. And, and I'm... Uh, 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 leaving the Vatican, and the, uh, the, it just occurred to me there ought to be an organization like YPO for Catholics, but without an age limit on it. And uh, as soon as I got that idea, I knew I had to do it. I knew I, was, I knew I could do it, and I would do it, and I, and uh, and I will do it. And uh, and that was in 1987. That's uh, what 30, 32, 33 years ago. That is, it has grown. It's still growing by leaps and bounds, you know. So. Yeah, they say it's uh, uh, the most effective lay organization in the Catholic Church. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, it's they, they've been saying that for a number of high that's hierarchies. So, yeah. And you have it super organized because uh, I've been privileged to go around. It's always the same schedule. It's, it's, it's wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. It's great. Did Cardinal O'Connor have anything to do with Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. I remember when I— uh, and we became very good friends. Yeah. Uh, anytime I was in the, uh, New York, I stay at his residence, uh, have breakfast with him after mass, uh, and uh, um, he just uh, he told people I'll do anything for that man. I don't know why I deserved so much uh, uh, of his uh, friendship, but uh, I was having a. Uh, it probably started when I he hosted a group of CEOs at his residence for me to explain. Well, the God is to him, and he sat through it. And afterwards, he said, "I'd like to, I'd like to uh, uh, talk to you." So okay. So he took me in another room, and he, and he, uh, and for about an hour, he went through a history of the church with various organizations that 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 did well, but every single one of them had problems in the early stages. Every single one of them, and uh, and he said, "You're going to have problems." He says, "Well." Uh, I says, Your Eminence, uh, you haven't read my book. I don't give up. 
<laughs> I will make this work. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, I lost a lot more sleep over Legatus than I ever did over Dominoes. And I had a lot of problems in Dominoes. Yeah. He, so he was right. But <laughs> You persevered. Uh, yeah, that's great. Which, one of the things that we know is just high on your radar, and that was the Ave Maria Law School and also Ave Maria University. So uh-huh. that is a biggie. So tell us how... You all, you have an inspiration. You go for it. I mean, tell us about that. Yeah. Well, um, I was on the board of Franciscan for 12 years, and I was a big fan of Father Mike's and mm-hmm. what they did there. And I, I was their biggest benefactor. Uh, and uh, I was expected to do a lot more, but for some reason they, they, they had him step down. And, uh, and, I, and I realized as a board member, uh, we don't make all the important decisions, particularly who the president is. And... Uh, and so somewhere in there, uh, I said, well, if all these schools are controlled by religious orders, uh, I think we need a school that's controlled by the board. And, uh, and we have to then make sure we get uh, strong Catholic board members. And so, so that's how we set up uh, Ave Maria. And it was about time I sold the company and, uh, uh, and was selling the company. And, uh, and I just say that's what I wanted to uh, do with my, for the bulk of my work life was start and run that. And then the law school is uh, to be a part of it, in fact, the flagship. And, the, and that idea started back at, when I was at Steubenville. Uh, uh, Charlie Rice was on the board, and, uh, and uh, he wanted uh, Franciscan to start, start, start a law school. And he says, well, you got a great law school with Notre Dame. He says, Notre Dame <laughs> isn't... All the professors aren't like me at Notre Dame. It's, uh-huh. So I said, oh, then we Steubenville should start one. It was at a time when I didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't help a lot. So they ended up not doing it. But I was very disappointed. So when we started uh, Ave Maria, that was part of the plan to have a law school. In fact, I tried to hire Charlie to be the first dean. He says he was too old, so he, so we got Bernie Dabransky. But that's... Uh, and. Uh, and, and that's why we started the law school, because it's the most influential profession there is next to the priesthood or the religious life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and because the lawyers run our country, they, uh, all our uh, judges are lawyers, uh, most of our politicians are lawyers, uh, a lot of our corporate leaders are lawyers, uh, uh, and there's a, there's a lawyer in every boardroom at every meeting in the country. So they... Are very influential. So, and uh, all the none of the Catholic law schools had a majority of Catholic uh, uh, faculty nor uh, nor students. So, uh, we needed a good uh, uh, Orthodox Catholic law school, and so that's why I started that. That is terrific. And the university is at. Um, um, now the, know, the university is coming along. We're we're about to get a new president. And I'm excited about, about him. He's, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's got a Franciscan University background. Uh, and, uh, uh, and when he uh, was elected in, in his first uh, comments to the board was, I, I want to fulfill Tom Monaghan's vision for Ave Maria. So that was, uh, That's great. That was music in my ears. You took a good man from Bishop Johnston. He's a good oh. Southerner. <laughs> so oh, yeah. anyway, but no, they're, they're, they support you. You know what? You're doing great things. So that another— And he, I mean, had a, he has the highest batting average in the history of NAIA colleges. He had a 480 batting average. You imagine that? Oh, my goodness. That's no. pretty good criteria for a president. That, that is terrific. <laughs> <laughs> How's the sports program there? Is it? Do you have a good It's good. Program? We have uh, outstanding— uh, football and basketball, and then we have okay. 15 sports. And, uh, we hope promote and, that. And this new president is very big on sports, and I think that's going to be elevated quite a bit. Because that, I believe in sports. I believe that it builds character. I think uh, if you have the right coaches, they can have as big an impact on the spiritual life of, uh, of the player as the faculty do. Oh. So. Tell me, what, what is... The relationship, I know that for a while there, like with the military there, you'd have the Marines. I was at, what did you see? Well, uh, we called the, uh, a lot of my background is the Marine Corps. They, uh, it's probably the, that and YPO was the best business background I had. And um, um, 
other than selling newspapers on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, uh, we called the team the, the Gyrenes, which is a nickname for a Marine. Mm -hmm. And um, and and the people asked me why that name. Well, first of all, what does it mean? I said, well, it's, it's a it's a nickname for Marines, and it's derived from G.I. Uh, and Marine, and they made it into. Oh. And, uh, and I said, uh, the reason it's appropriate is because history is one big battle between good and evil, and the Marines are the best fighting force in the world, so we want to create warriors for good. So nobody's argued with that logic. That's true, true. Yeah. And they, they embraced the name, the kids. Good. There. Yeah. I always it's liked the only it. School with, the only school with that name. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Tom, it, it just keeps going on and on, but um, your foundation, the Ave Maria Foundation, when we first came here, I remember you, there, you had a newspaper, and you had, of course, um, Christmas lights, and but also the foundation. Spiritual has Christmas support. lights. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. With a live at the petting farm. Yeah, it was wonderful. 3,000 lights. I know. I know. But the greens are still up. <laughs> the what? The lights. The, well, green, the green lights are still yeah. up. Yeah. But that's also, how that started. <laughs> yeah, we were I, pinning the uh, green lights, the regular Christmas lights, all along the eaves of the building. And that got very expensive. And I saw a building in Dallas, a high rise, that had these outlined in the building. I said, well, gee, why can't I just do that and then just leave them up there all the time? So that's how that happened. That so is right. Well, they're them, they're very down. obvious when you're driving at night. So, yeah. But the foundation has also supported so many things. You, I might leave out some things, but let's say the Thomas More uh, Law Center, the Ave Maria Radio. And when we first came here, you had a newspaper, didn't you? Didn't Cradle. You? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good too. Yeah. You know, Al Crest was in charge of that. And then, oh. Yeah, they went to every Catholic we could identify in the greater Ann Arbor area. I think it was about 30,000 circulation. It, it was good. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> it's about it, Mother. <laughs> That's about it. And um, it's, uh, it's not me. It's uh, uh, like uh, the Thomas More Law Center, which you mentioned. That was Dick Thompson's idea. And the radio station was uh, Frank Sherkin's idea. You know, I, I, uh, and, and we we started out by renting a, a radio station, and they changed the letters to WDEO for God, and uh, and then that became the that, that turned out that was the first Catholic radio station in the whole country, and there's about sixteen hundred Protestant radio, and, and the, so now there's about four hundred of them. So, so I mean, just at the right place at the right time. As far as the Thomas More Law Center, that was all Dick Thompson. He he was working for me, helping me with some election campaigns I was involved in for pro-life politicians. And and he uh, said, you know, this is what I really like to do. And I didn't know anything about pro bono public service law firms. And so I just, uh, uh, I liked the way he worked and uh, his dedication. And so he was a convert by Father Hardin, by the way. That's right. And so uh, he's taken a run with it. That is wonderful. Well, Tom, I see we're we're one of the beneficiaries of of the good things you've done. What 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 inspired you to help us? <laughs> you know, I mean, we we're just so grateful. I, we're so grateful. As I say, we would not even be here had it not been for you. And and God has just blessed it so well, much. But He blessed us through you. Well you'd have been somewhere else, probably in New York. No, no. no. We I don't I don't know. I really don't know. But, but I don't know. Uh, it uh I I was starting these little grade schools here. And I had this idea that uh, probably wasn't practical, but going back to my early days when we had multi grades in the classroom. And we were gonna have uh, two grades in the classroom and have small schools and uh and uh and I had, uh, I think, one or two, and I added a few more. We ended up with four, I know, in the Spirit of Santa schools. But I was, uh, uh, I needed somebody to run them. And that's what I had in mind when I heard that you were, uh, uh, I got some kind of communication saying that you were going to start a, a new uh, religious order. And so I immediately just uh, got a hold of you and uh, flew out to New York where you were staying and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the rest is history, I guess. The rest is history, and here and our, we are. And the schools, though, what I had in mind didn't work out too oh. well, but uh, I think what uh, we have uh, two beautiful schools that are there. To your, you know, I mean, um, 
to your credit, because you were just, uh, you gave us this, you know, boost of a start. And I, well, not only do I thank you for that, but I, I just thank you for all the things you've done for the church. You are, you're such an example of, of a, of a Catholic a businessman, uh, just a Catholic family man. Uh, we, we're so, we're so grateful. And that to me, I think in our culture, to see somebody willing to stand up for what's true, to stand up for what's right, we're stand up for what's beautiful. And you're just an example for that, Tom. I mean, our sisters love you and we are just so grateful. And, um, you're in our prayers and, and I'm sure I, I just say that and I'm sure there, there are thousands of other people that feel the same way, that are grateful. I mean, uh, only history will prove, like all through this organization, Legatus, University Law School, and we're just all on a journey to get to heaven. Mm-hmm. And you're an example to us to, <laughs> to keep, you know, keep fighting. I mean, you're a man of determination, you know. I mean, your faith is number one. You're yeah. kind of like my, my well, dad, you know, it's faith and family in that order. <laughs> well, so coming from you, that's uh, that's quite a compliment. It, it, it uh, puts a lot of pressure on me to live up to it. Well, you, Tom, you are your beautiful example to us. So thank you so much, and thank you for being over here. We really appreciate this interview, and there are lots of people going to see it and hope hope people are have the courage to stand up in our culture for. The truths of our faith. You know, we, we're, we're so blessed with the Catholic faith and, and mm-hmm. your beautiful example of, uh, what it means to just stick to it. To come, come, come hell or high water. You know, just, I'm going to be a Catholic in this culture. Well, it's never so, been a sacrifice, Mother. It's, it's oh. always what I wanted to do. I, I just felt that uh, God's been very good to me. And the best thing I can do for my fellow man is help him to get to heaven. And, uh, and, uh, the best way to do that is help the Catholic Church. And the best way to help the Church, I thought, was education. Because it's been so lacking for the last, uh, two or three generations. And you're, you're probably the best, uh, tool for changing that of anybody in the country. Well, God bless you, Tom. And thanks a million for being here. God bless. Thank you. If you've enjoyed this particular show of the Culture Cast, please make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter. But as always, all of this content can be found on goledigital.org.